This is what can only be described as astonishing weather. We're, it's uh, Easter Sunday um, up in the highlands of Scotland in a little village called King Craig. Uh, and I'm about to go do a 10 or something kilometre jog. Now this is potentially the furthest jog I've done in about eight, nine, ten months due to my sciatica uh, issues in my back where I almost needed to get surgery, where I was bed bound for a while. And to make it extra difficult, um, I'm going to be doing it in my Vibram five finger shoes uh, to really destroy my calves. So I suspect tomorrow I'm not going to be able to walk at all. Um, but just when it's 16, 17 degrees, no wind, and all I can hear are the birds tweeting in the trees. It's absolutely stunning, and I've got to go for a jog. So first thing that we do is we head down the hill, down to a place called the uh, Loch Inch Water Sports. Also, for future reference, um, this being April the 5th or 6th or something, uh, it seems like the Osprey has come back to King Craig. There's an osprey that nests on an island out here, which you can see from the bridge, which goes over Loch Inch, which then becomes the Spey. Ah. What you've got over there, that is what we call Osprey Island, which is on Loch Inch. So yeah, very nice. And Easter time seems to be when it comes back to nest again. So, off we go. <sighs> now, a little training tip for myself again is that if you haven't been uh, uh, running barefoot style for a while, uh, there's two things which is really going to affect you. One, you may be fatter and heavier, so every time you land on one of these stones, it's going to feel a little bit more painful. And um, secondly, your calves aren't nearly as strong. Um, for dealing with this, so they're going to burst. Additionally, and then on top of that, if you've got sciatica, sciatica is probably uh, bad for the nerve going down to the calf, so you're going to have one weaker leg than the other, so that's just something to be aware of. Uh, but uh, definitely, um, it's the calf fitness which is the difference. One thing to note though, even if you're running slower, whenever a jogger passes you, going the opposite direction, always speed up. So it looks like you're going faster than what you actually are. But try and show off your shoes a little bit. They may be jogging in real shoes. They'll see you in your bare feet or your Vibrams and be going, respect. So, Vibrams always wins. It's also something weird to remember what it's like. Ooh, it's cold to walk or jog in mud and just like have your feet squelch through it and uh, and also then on the stones. So yeah, the, I think that was the last thing I was trying to say is that the, the pain from standing on stones is another thing which you've got to retrain your body to be able to deal with because uh, I think if you do lots of barefoot running kind of stuff, yeah, I think your feet either toughen up or mentally you can deal with a, a little stone hitting you left, right or centre. Um, but when you haven't done it for eight months or a year like myself, every little stone is a big stone. <laughs> it is incredibly painful. So uh, that's just something to be wary, wary of. And, uh, and maybe that, as we're doing, like what I'm about to do is this 10 kilometre, I've done one and a half so far, 10 kilometre jog, maybe a good thing to really get myself back in the zone again. Anyway, off we go, up to Fishy Bridge now. I got a great comment the other day about me talking about getting fit and all that kind of stuff and uh, Matthew, I think it was Matthew, said fit for what? And uh, you know what's the point of getting fit or why, why get to a certain level of fitness? What is it that you all want? And uh, there's something basic, something natural about having the ability to just get up, get out of the house, get out of the city, get out of, away from roads, and then being in places, ooh, that's squishy, like this. And all the birds seem to have shut up just as I stopped talking. You've got cows in the fields over there, snow on the hills over there, birds tweeting in the trees, leaves under my feet, mud under the leaves. Ah, 
more cows over there. No flies as well at the moment, which is amazing. So that's, that's making it extra lovely. But there's just something so primor primeval, primordial about having a level of fitness where you have the ability to get from one place to the next using those little dangly things we've got hanging from our hips. Um, yeah, I, I, and I understand at some points where it's in the case of, you know, once you're able to do a marathon, <laughs> you know, what's the point of getting fitter? Or what's the, you know, somebody did an Ironman. That's unbelievable levels of fitness. You know, what, what are you needing that amount of fitness for? Which I totally understand. But having a decent basic level of fitness where you can get out and enjoy nature is something which everyone should aspire to have. I'm not saying everyone should aspire to be able to do marathons or half marathons, but being able to do what I do, which is adventure cardio, where you're able to just get up, get out of the house, and you have the fitness, the energy reserves, and the muscle endurance to be, oh, to be able to get out and enjoy. Like, over the last eight months, I've been having nightmares quite often. And now, since I'm starting to be able to run again, I'm having things called night hilarities, where, where I wake up in fits of laughter, just going, ah, it's having such brilliant, brilliant dreams. And I think that's just something that you just get naturally from being able to do a jog. We're heading down to that, that's uh, Loch, no, that's River Feshy. There's a bridge up from there. So we're going to head along this path until we get to Feshy Bridge. Now that is what I call a lovely sound. And again, something which is you would not want to do in your trainers, but if your feet get hot, get your Vibrams. Oh, to cool down your toes. Oh, now that, oh there's a lovely sunny day. That is some cold water. Oh, even just getting that, that deep in. Oh, it's nice getting your feet nice and wet and some Vibrams. Gives you a little bit extra padding ah, and cools down your feet because they do get hot. Um, but because there's nothing of the Vibrams, you can just carry on running in them. The water just squirts out the side. But uh, yeah, look at that. That's over to the, I think that's the Suey Hill or maybe that's the Suey Hill over there. Again, if you're ever thinking of getting into hill running, hill jogging, adventure cardio, highly recommend Aviemore and King Craig regions for jogs. So let's go back. Beach, look at that. <laughs> it really is funny just how much of a hippie I become every time I put my Vibrams on and I'm running outside and it's good weather. I am as at one, at peace with everything. Ah, uh, it really, <laughs> total, Hippie Dom with his Vibram Five Fingers on at one with nature. Ah, uh, so good. <laughs> oh, look at this. Beautiful. something really odd. Uh, those little s balancing stones. Unless somebody's come down in the morning to build them, they could have been there for a long time and it's always pretty windy at night time. So how the heck they're there? Let's go and have a look at those. Now this is definitely going to be challenging for the old Vibrams. Let's go back to them. Ow. Oh, too bad. I can probably hear there is a little bit of a wind, and yet somebody has been building those. Yeah, they're not. Oh, ah! holy crap! I, I hope no one saw me do that. Sorry. Okay, so you saw how, how delicate those are, but yeah, there's, there's lots of them. 
there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Seventeen, there was. That's that's cool. I feel really bad now. Kind of bad. Let's go. As a punishment, I must go in. Oh god, these stones are sore to walk over. I'm gonna go. Nah, I'm not gonna go in. I'll go in further up. Let's head up. Oh. Ow, ow. Oh, a top skimmer, keeping that. Now, I think this place has to be a contender for paradise of Scotland. Sunny, no wind, no flies, birds tweeting, an incredibly ancient old tree, a bridge, a river. Look at this, that is very cool. If you wanted to come along and jump off some cliffs into some water, Maybe not from here, but I'll show you this bit up here. So this is Feshi Bridge over the river Feshi from Loch Feshi, which is up that way, which leads down into the Spey River down there. And if you want to jump into some very cold water, you can go, I think it's actually from there that you jump. Or some people actually jump from the bridge into a very narrow bit which you can jump into there. Some big rocks under the water. But yeah. Very, very lovely picnic here. Got some kids, go for a cycle, get in the cold water if you need to. Oh, paradise, absolute paradise. And additionally, this is it on an Easter Sunday, so like nature hasn't actually come back to life yet. But uh, as in like all the trees are still kind of dead. But ah, oh, awesome sound, good sound to listen. If you live in a city, that's something you need to hear once in a while. And that goes over to the other side. So if you're brave enough, you can jump into that. But that is very cold. Cold and lovely. Anyway, for the rest of the running path, you go up this side of the Feshi River. And it looks like if you want to go kayaking or something, you can go with your dog and some kayaks down there. And it looks like there's a kayak way down there as well. Oh, oh, here is a kayaker actually coming. So even though it's sunny, even though it's 16, 7 degrees Celsius, <laughs> you still don't want to fall in that water that's for sure but lovely if you've if you ever wondered what the perfect ground is for barefoot running or for getting used to vibram five fingers this is the perfect ground it's like where it's just kind of in a forest and the ground is kind of a bit earth bit of mud yeah there's a couple of stones there but they're easy to avoid it's soft underfoot uh, and just pleasant to jog on and lots of kind of ups and downs and movements left and right so it's not just monotonous running like compared to running on a road or anything this is like the perfect ground to take up barefoot running and then it says please shut the gate so I think we're going that way okay this now this this is where I'm definitely lost there's a not really really a path that way and I'm sure the way I meant to go was that way, but I followed a sign that said footpath this way. However, the footpath this way requires me to uh, forward a stream. I don't know if that's the actual term. So I'm thinking, do I go that way, which really looks like the wrong way to go, or to go that way, which really doesn't look like a way, but it's kind of the way I think I need to go. Uh, either way, I'm going to chill down my feet in this water. 
And... That was lovely. That was really nice. Didn't, didn't bother me at all. Oh, you yeah. Oh, that's, that's definitely chilly. Um, I'll, uh, where am I at? About five and a half kilometers so far. Uh, and I'm sure this whole path was normally just like 10. And I'm sure I should be going that way. But I'll just go this way and adventure. I don't remember All I know is over that way, there is a big hill, which I've climbed up to the top of once. There's also a gliding center there. If you've, if you've got a glider, you can take off and it's kind of over there. So I've never been along this way. So this is officially becoming another adventure cardio for me. Ooh, I'm a bit slippy in my shoes just now. Need to, need to jog that water out. Oh, that was felt good, cold, but good. Okay, I'm willing, willing to say that 99% uh, sure this wasn't the right way because that the path carries on up to here. And then, as you see, it goes along to River Feshi. So, that path wasn't right. Interesting, interesting maneuver. Uh, lovely scenery, River Feshi flowing, flowing down past the stones. Ah, oh, beautiful snow on the hills, blue sky. This is what it's like in Scotland every day. Well, it should be, it should be. Um, so I have no idea, like I'm really, I'm not going over that to some painful stones. So I think retrace <laughs> uh, where I've just come, come from and go up that path, which I said may not actually be a path. So that's where we're going. Okay, back we go. Oh, lovely, lovely. Definitely easier the second time. Oh. Okay, let's find our way up that way. Like I said we would earlier. Now, looks like this path uh, isn't really where I'm meant to be going either. This is going up to a kind of broken fit. Oh, uh, well, yes, no, it is. It, it is, I think. I think. Yes. This is exactly where I want to go. And the fence is well secured with that piece of string. Ah, okay. This wasn't too lost. Oh, wow, look. There is a plane pulling up a glider. So the plane is in front and it's pulling the glider with a big string. That's cool. Cool. All right, close the back of the fence. Don't want any cows escaping. And this is definitely a path which I've been along. Oh, in fact, there's another glider over there in the sky. Quietly floating down. So, glider over there, another glider over there. Very popular things. And there goes the plane that takes a glider up, flying back down, getting to land. Seems to have one wheel at the front. Yo. Flying straight towards that mountain. Looks kind of scary. I see one glider over there. And another two. I wonder, do they have like gliding competitions? Oh, and then the plane's flying up the way. I think the pilot there is doing a thing called having fun. Ooh, now this is what I consider to be not a great path for barefoot running on. This is slightly more painful. Ow. Ow, 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 ow. Strangely, I can actually hear the glider. There's a glider right above me, up there. Over there. You can actually hear it, even though it has no engine. Obviously just the friction from the wind, turbulence from the wind in the wings or something. You can actually hear it all the way down the ground here. Quite surprising. 
Next bit, I'm coming off the road, going down a path, down a little uh, bit off the road here. I'll show you that on the map. And this is taking me to a place called the Lochens. I don't know if there's a, another part of the name to that, but these are some kind of creepy, super black puddles of water, um, which could be very deep, I have no idea, but I still have my skimming stone, stone as you had from earlier. So let's see how well this goes. I'll go down here. Down the Now, my imagination being as insane as what it is uh, makes me think that this, these lock-ins, which are just totally black, uh, my imagination is that they're actually super duper deep. They're probably not. I think they're from a giant stone during the Ice Age, plopped in here, made a hole. The stone eroded, but the hole didn't, I don't understand. Uh, and it's just really peaty water. Um, and, but what I imagine so inside here, it's actually super deep. It goes down 100 meters, and at the very bottom, there's a giant monster down there. So whenever I skim this stone, and it goes all the way out into the middle of the locket, I'm just imagining a giant monster to suddenly go out of the lock, locking, and uh, and just like like decimate the whole place. So let's see how well we go. Let's see if we can wake up the monster. Just get mm, ooh, chilly. Let's see. Good skim. Fortunately, no monsters. We are safe. So again, this is another lovely area to do some uh, walks around if you've got kids and stuff. Not so great if you've got a pram, but definitely if you've got kids that can walk, uh, just around these creepily black, they're just totally black. So bizarre. Um, place to walk, fair enough. So, let's go. So, Inch Reich Forest Youth Lockins. That's where we are. We are here. And um, I think I've come from all the way here. We're there. Then I'm going to go somewhere up that way. Back that way. Let's go. Oh. Definitely. If I was a doctor. Um, and I had any patients with like mild forms of depression or anxiety or stress or even just random minor illnesses. I would 100% recommend instead of pills, instead of potions, instead of working at a gym, is a weekend up here in good weather and getting all your senses therapy. So there's lots of different types of, you've got physiological therapy, doing the exercise, that's great for you. You've got, you've got, what is it you have? What's the smelling therapy? Uh, what's that called? <laughs> totally forgotten, it's the one where you get nice smells and just smells are meant to make you feel good. Out here, the pine trees, the pine on the ground, the mud in the ground, the, the peaty water the horse poop, all that, that is absolutely prime olfactory sense therapy? No. Fragrance therapy? No, that's not either. Totally, totally cannot remember what the name of that therapy is. The therapy where you just smell things, it's meant to be good for you. Um, anyway, so yeah, so once in, all the smells that you get out here in nature, 100% perfect olfactory therapy. Can't remember the, the term. Um, then, one thing which I think is totally overlooked, uh, well, first, secondly, visual therapy. Just looking at this, the sun streaming through the trees, the blue sky, the wild animals, the birds, the people on their bikes, the sunshine. Oh, this is just such visual therapy for everybody's head. Then you've got the audio therapy. If it's not the birds in the trees, it's the wind in your ears. And just hearing that, this, the trickle of the stream, 
the sound of the stones under your feet, the sounds of the trees and the forest. Oh, absolutely so beneficial, mentally and physiologically, I suspect. Um, and then there's the, just the physical activity of being active, being outdoors, and the fresh air, like this. Ah, oh, breathe it in. This is, this is as fresh as you're going to get. The highlands of Scotland in the middle of a forest on an Easter Sunday. Nobody around, no cars, nothing. Just the sounds of the spring birds tweeting away. Absolutely stunning, 100% the best therapy for anybody with any issue. <laughs> uh, what's it, those vegancy, carb, or was it carb the oh, up? Here, I'm, I'm gonna make up a new phrase of nature the hell up or something, get in nature. I don't know, there's a phrase somewhere which I'm gonna try and pattern for just saying, get out. Get out into the, it's not even the wilderness. This isn't even wilderness at all. This is just a little bit off the road. And it's just so good for you, mentally and physically. And both of those together, giving a synergistic effect of just making you a healthier, better, happier person that wants to be alive. Oh, so good, can't wait until my six month old is big enough to go for jogs with me. I couldn't do this in a pram, I couldn't push him in this. Um, but definitely, whenever he's old enough, definitely want to be taking him around on jogs like this. That'd be great. Aromatherapy, that's what it is, aromatherapy. Now I've remembered, two kilometers later. Then, after a bit of road running here, oh, the witch is really killing the calves. That's me over the 10 kilometer mark. Uh, oh, they're feeling it and it really hurts. Ah, oh, the, the pads of my feet, actually, oh. They are tender. Go past the greenhouse and go into an RSPB uh, Badenoch Way Inch Marshes Nature Reserve to kind of again going off the main path again into nature, into a nature reserve. Um, but also, oh, just road running on Vibram Five Fingers or like barefoot running uh, is something oh, that really needs to be worked on not for not just for the muscles um and your tendons and everything but for your ability to deal with the pain like there's different pain from walking over stuff like roots and and small little stones and pebbles to just pounding 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 concrete road definitely something to think about before you go out uh and go hey i'm gonna go barefoot running uh interesting birds flying around here i will shut up and enjoy nature uh. Now, I'm thinking of either doing something which may be a great idea or a really bad idea. I don't, I don't know what it is at the moment yet. So, I'm coming back down into Lockinge via the Badenoch Way. And uh, my feet are burning. My calves are killing me. The, my knee pits, I don't know what they're called, but the kind of pits of my knee, the back of my knee. Oh, they're feeling tender. And I'm thinking I could easily go wading in to Lockinge to cool down my calves and my everything all the way up but however I've still got about another three kilometers to go so is cooling down ah stone oh that was that was a bit sore so is cooling down when you're not at the very end a majorly bad idea am I going to get serious cramps or will this totally revitalize and constrict my muscles for a minute and help it get some fresh fresh blood into it or something but either way I guess you'll find out in the next video because I am just about to go in oh. oh see that's the great thing about wearing Vibrams you can just go I'm going into the water oh let's see how man I am just now And there's a whole bunch of old women coming down the path there right behind me so they're thinking I'm pretty odd but oh that's cold that's really cold oh possibly great idea or really bad idea so oh, oh time I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll walk that off for you are oh. 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 Ah, like you all you all probably know that 
you know, after a heavy run or a day skiing or anything, rock climbing, uh, they obviously like a great thing is to have an ice bath, uh, an ice cold bath or just cold bath afterwards to just get fresh blood going in. And I respect that. That is absolutely correct. Um, good thing to do. Toughens you up as well. Um, but that is always totally after you've done your stuff. It helps reduce swelling, it helps stop uh, cramps, it helps the healing process as well. Um, it speeds up the healing process. But doing it mid-run, mid-jog, that's what I'm trying to find out if it's good. I'm, I'm in too difficult a path to run at the moment anyway, as you can see. Um, but uh, what I can say is, straight away, that oh, my legs feel good now. Uh, definitely feel good. However, I'm not running, so that may be a different issue uh, in five minutes' time. But anecdotally, I would say that that's, that's good. That's good. Maybe it reduces the swelling and stuff all around your knees and your ankles and your toes and in your muscles and your feet. Maybe it is good, or maybe that's bad. I don't know. But anyway, lots of flies here. I'm going to try and jog here because it's now got a little bit easier with just roots and twigs. Ah. And the Badenoch Way takes you around past the, uh, I call it the boathouse, uh, Lock Inch Water Sports over here, where I think, I'm guessing that bit there is the fishing area, which is where all the blooming flies are coming from. Um, but if you're wanting to go kayaking or sailing or stuff, uh, you can do it here. You've got a lovely little place where you can get all these, like, are they kayaks or canoes or stuff like that? And there is a nice little beach. And you can go get a meal and stuff in there, but I, I'm gonna go make myself look like a crazy person, or like Jesus, and just walk oh, in the water because the last bit I did there was great. However, the last bit I've been walking has been pretty painful stones. So I'm going to go. So that's made my toes red hot. Pain. Oh, oh, it's gone. It doesn't get easier every time I go in. It's hot. Oh, oh, it's a minute. Right, it's a good one. Mm. Ah, Okay, that's me walking off up to my knees, and it's actually just to the point of, oh, that's just painfully cold. Um, yeah, you definitely need a wetsuit on if you're going into this. Oh, but that's that's ex oh, I don't know if that's exactly what I needed, but I'm having a I'm having a serious endorphin kick uh, from that. So now we're going to see if that was any good. Oh, I feel even weird just walking. Uh, totally numb. Uh, now I'm going to go and jog after being in ice cold water there and uh, see how that feels. Oh, things just not working right now. That's weird. So that was uh, Lockinch Water Sports uh, Centre. Bar and all that kind of stuff there. What a beautiful day. Easter Sunday. Half the families are either up in the hills skiing in Kirangorm or the other half are down at the beach. That's a good advert for Scotland. Good advert for Avi Moore, good advert for the Highlands. Nice. Okay, so regarding whether going into ice cold water is good or bad uh, if you're running, um, at the moment I'm saying it feels good. However, I think there are three variables that you have to take into consideration if you're going to go into ice cold water. One, how, ti uh, how tired and sore your muscles and joints and everything are before you go in. Two, how long you go into the water for and how cold it is. So like if you're getting just a quick splash, oh that's cold, or a proper, oh my god that's cold, like that second one I did. And then the third one, third variable, is um, how intensely you're going to be running afterwards. So just now I'm doing barefoot running, so it's, it's really just a plodding pace you know I'm only going at seven and a half kilometers an hour um, so maybe if I was doing bigger strides uh, or really pushing myself maybe that would have been a, a different factor to consider but if you're doing the simple plodding adventure cardio I would say actually has really freshened up my <coughs> I just ate a spider web I really freshened up my calves, ankles, toes, feet. Definitely, I think that was a good move. Ah. And if you consider King Craig Stores to be your start and finish point, that's King Craig Stores, very sweet. Start and finish point, 
that's well what I've done is 13 and a half kilometers um, which is pretty good however I would say about a good half kilometer of that is me being completely lost so you could probably get that down to under 13 kilometers if you did that the fast way but uh, yeah lovely run to do on an Easter Sunday in Scotland there you go